Okay, welcome back to members of 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas, and our ongoing study in Christological Perichoresis and Ecological Crisis by Sahinadu. We're going to take a look at uh, the second part of Chapter 4, pages 118 to 135, and we will key in on Moltmann's Social Doctrine of the Trinity. So let's go to Block 1 and take a look at interpretations and misinterpretations of perichoresis. We begin with Mark Wallace. The Spirit ensures the interrelation of the triune persons. The Spirit within creation is the power of unity. The Spirit engenders compassion for all life forms. The Spirit is the agent of transformation. So it's a very much Spirit-based perichoresis by Wallace. Now, Catherine Keller emphasizes the interdependency of relations within Moltmann's panentheism. Now, Elizabeth Johnson, perichoresis is a cyclical movement, but she uses the metaphor of divine dance. And here's where we have to say something. The base word structure for perichoresis is not correggio, choreography. It is not referencing the divine dance. That is wrong and this is not the only person to come up with this but the metaphor of divine dance is incorrect. It's the wrong word study for perichoresis. We already got the proper word study in our first lesson so we're looking at some misinterpretations here. Now Katharina Halks stresses the communion of the three persons and an openness for creation. Creation is seen as the habitation of the Trinity. God is open and inviting toward the cosmos. Patricia Wilson Kastner says we are invited to share in the divine perichoresis of mutual interrelatedness, but she makes a mistake also of using the wrong word study and calling perichoresis the divine dance. We already know the correct definition, and it's not divine dance. It is a circular, triune, rotate, rotating enclosure that encloses all of creation. Perichoresis is a circular, triune, rotating enclosure that encloses all of creation. It is not a divine dance. <laughs> Sounds poetic, but it's wrong. Now, Catherine Moway Laguna says perichoresis is the communion of the three persons, again using that wrong metaphor of divine dance. So we've had three here in this block one, three misinterpretations. It is not correggio, that is not the base word, it is not choreography. That is the wrong etymology, that is wrong word study. Now Mary Gray says perichoresis is the sacrificial movement of identity between humanity and nature. She emphasizes kenosis self-emptying. It is the movement of divine love poured out on the world. God heals creation through the role of the church. So the emphasis is on perichoresis as kenosis self-emptying, which is a good point. So good point made there by Mary Gray. But what I want you to remember in block one is that these aren't the only three. There is a there happen to be a group of theologians that have misinterpreted perichoresis by getting the root word wrong and taking correggio choreography as the base word. It is not the base word for perichoresis. We already discussed it in the first lesson. It is to bring make room for something and to enclose something. God's first act of divine love to make room within God's self for creation to have the space for creation. <clears throat> it's a making room within oneself and that is the way that Moltmann uses the concept. So divine dance is just plain old-fashioned wrong. 
If you come across anybody interpreting perichoresis as divine dance, don't follow that interpretation. It's a wrong word study usage. But I'm glad the author did mention it here, so at least Sahendadu made us aware of those wrong interpretations, so I appreciate her doing that. But whenever you see divine dance, that's the wrong base word. The base word is not Correggio, so skip over it. Block 2, understanding Moltmann's social doctrine of the Trinity. Challenges. God is understood as a society bound by, bound by the love of mutual self-giving, which enlists the concept of perichoresis for Trinitarian interrelatedness. Trin Trinitarian interrelatedness. For Moltmann, the Trinitarian persons are composed by their relationships it is not a threefold individualism for Moltmann. Moltmann negates threefold individualism. He borrows from Gregory of Nyssa, where Moltmann posits unity as, and this is key, unity as unity of energia actualization. So it's unity of energia actualization. And that energia actualization is what? To actualize the kingdom of God. It's unity as unity of energy actualization. And he also addresses the concept of hypostasis. The concept of hypostasis. There are three hypostases. All three are co-substantial. And it stands for three unique subjects of the common divine substance. Three unique subjects of the common divine substance. The eternal logos. A unity of communal love. Perichoresis must have an ontological basis for its relations. What is the ontological essence? And so, Block 2, Note 6. It enlists a certain kind of language for Moltmann. Not merely descriptive, it is instead metaphorical and integrating, where gender stereotypes are transcended. And here we come to an important point. Block 2, Note 7. Note 7 is a key note for Block 2. Gregory of Nyssa did not prioritize person over substance. Athanasius posited that the sun's being shared God's substance, implying that substance is relational. Moltmann would agree, substance is relational. Your key point in Block 2 is that the essential substance is a relational substance. And it can be linked with that additional statement about uh, note 3. Link note 7 to note 3, where Moltmann posits unity as unity of energy actualization. Unity of energy actualization. So the unity is in the act of unveiling the kingdom of God. The Father, the Son, and the Spirit all act to unveil the kingdom of God. It's a unity of energy actualization, and it tells us that the substance, essential substance, is relational. So now we can go to block three. We can look at the conclusion. Moltmann's unified flow of the divine energy, the Cappadocians, positive perichoresis as Hypostasis individuality in a common usia substance or common usia essence. Therefore, God's ultimate being is identified with personhood rather than usia. The Father is the ground of God's being. The Father as the ground of God's being. Substantial essence does not exist without hypostasis personhood. The cause of being is personhood as a unified flow of divine energy actualization. How does personhood manifest itself? Personhood manifests itself as a unified flow of divine energy. So we conclude with 3.3, three, the unified flow of the divine energy in Moltmann. Perichoresis is a structuring principle. As Christological perichoresis first, then moving on to form a all-inclusive doctrine of creation. Extremely important information here that we truly needed this is a great clarification here in the second half of chapter 4 
The first half of 4 gave us correct definition of perichoresis, but we needed this latter portion of 4 to bring out misinterpretations. Perichoresis is not, is not, is not divine dance. If you come across divine dance, it is wrong. Perichoresis is not the divine dance. The root word is not correggio. It is not choreography. It is, and I will give it to you again. This is Moltmann's definition of perichoresis, and the author is siding with Jürgen Moltmann. Perichoresis is equal to a circular, triune, rotating enclosure that encloses all of creation. God made room within himself as a first act of love to create the space within himself for creation to take place. It was a self-sacrificial act of love. Therefore, perichoresis is a circular, triune, rotating enclosure that encloses all of creation. Creation is inside God, Acts 17.28. Creation is inside God, Acts 17.28. That's Moltmann's definition, a circular, triune, rotating enclosure that encloses all of creation. So this lesson was essential because we had to learn that Perichoresis is not the divine dance. We have three instances here of incorrect interpretation. It's okay. I mean, it sounds poetic, and it sounds like it's a great way to go, but that poetry is wrong. Perichoresis is not the divine dance. That's wrong word study. That is incorrect word study. It is God making room within himself for creation to take place and where he can enclose creation and permeate all of creation. It is not the divine dance. It's the history. Well, for Moltmann, you just summarize it by saying that Perichoresis is history of the triune God. You can just, if you wanted a shorter definition, for Moltmann, Perichoresis is history of the triune God that takes up creation within itself. Perichoresis for Moltmann, the short definition. History of the triune God. It's the historical. Remember, John of Damascus. Moltmann picked up the historical interpretation of Perichoresis there. Perichoresis is the history of the triune God that takes up and encloses all of creation, lifting it, lifting it, and lifting it into restored reunion with the Father. And then I love the fact that we get into this unity as the flow of the divine energia. Remember from our past studies of Moltmann's definition, we begin with the Father as the Lagos. The Father goes out of himself through the Son as the Rhema spoken word of creation. And then the Spirit is incarnate in creation and it works to lift creation and lift creation and lift creation into restored reunification with the Father. It's Lagos, Rhema, Numa. Lagos, Rhema, Numa. There is your triad for the triune history of God. Lagos, Rhema, Numa. That is the that is the triad for the triune history of God, Moltmann's definition of perichoresis. Very important that we keep that in mind. I'm going to keep reminding all of us of that in our study because we don't want to get confused by misinterpretations. Block 1 in includes misinterpretations. That's why I labeled it interpretations and misinterpretations of perichoresis. There are three misinterpretations of perichoresis in Block 1. And then Block 2, we learn that for Moltmann, substance is relational. Substance is relational. And then that takes us on to that beautiful statement that the triune personhood is united in the united flow of the divine energy of actualization of the kingdom of God. Beautiful additional lesson for chapter 4. I just love the fact that Sahinadu is clarifying things for us. So part 1 and part 2 of chapter 4 I'm very impressed with. And we will pick up next time in the first half of chapter 5.
This will wrap up 118 to 135.